Hello, everybody. Welcome. Hi. Yeah, Catching though. up on Shazam messages. Late to Shazam because Shazam happened. I know you guys don't remember Shazam it. Two, you guys are all thinking of the gods. Well, you guys covered the first Shazam. It's like no, the second one. Then they're like second. Second. There was a second. Yeah. Oh, no. 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 Second. It's like yes. Yes. One. Yes. But it's funny. Um, it really feels like that's going on because uh, I was talking to Drinker and I was like, "You, you gonna see it?" He was like, "Yeah, I'll probably see it." He's like, "You gonna see it?" And I was like, "I already told you I saw it." And he was like. Really? You've seen that film? And I was like, yeah. And I was like, we've done coverage of it. <laughs> it, was, it was done yesterday. And he was like, you've covered? Oh. Yesterday. And I, yeah, I think it's got a spell over the film. We've talked about this before with some other films, but one of those. It would suck to be like the creator of a film that everyone is just, you know, is to forget. <laughs> like, yeah, he... and just nobody cares. I've heard some people say like, it was good. It's just, it's just not very interesting and that it leads nowhere. And Damn. I mean, yeah. I feel like even if a good film ultimately ends up leading nowhere, that, that can still muster a lot of interest. Yeah, I mean, The Whale doesn't go anywhere <laughs> once it's done. A lot of films don't go anywhere, but is that is this what has happened with like superhero films and yeah. these big franchises? If it actually leads nowhere and there's no story afterward, it's not worthwhile for the story that it is. A shame that is that we're in that era. In any case, we're going to have a look at what you guys were saying. Here we go. Number one. So glad I'm not going to watch this. The first one was meh, and I have no desire to see the second. You didn't even like the first one. A lot of people have been praising the first one and saying the second one kind of shit compared, and it's just like, alright. I'll forever assume that everyone has good feelings about the first one because of the nature of its release at the time. Especially in the context of DC, where it's like, oh, wow, it's, like, not miserable. Yeah. That was almost enough. Like, if it was to release right now, you gotta wonder what people... Nobody would, would care. Do. No, no. I think it would just be like, oh, this is another sludgy Marvel film. Oh, it's DC? Oh, well. Well, that's the thing, right? Like, some people would be like, you know, the box office for this film doesn't tell us anything about, you know, blah, blah, and it's like, I don't know, it kind of does, because DC, uh, part of their benefit of their movies in the box office is the fame of Marvel. A lot of people just be like, superhero movie? Yeah, that's reliable. Yep, superhero movie. Yeah, exactly. I don't know how many people even would have known that Shazam was DC. Hmm. But a lot of people wondering, how come Wonder Woman isn't with the Avengers? Yeah, people, like, I, I, it's almost as though people who get into discussions on, like, forums and on Reddit and stuff on the internet, talking about these films, need to remember that, like, most people don't really know anything about, like, you know what universe superman or like iron man is in in fact it's probably at the point where a lot of people just think it's all marvel like marvel is just synonymous with superheroes yeah partly because they've kind of won the branding uh competition especially on the film front and they got fat and complacent now look yeah at them. but dc is not offering great competition <laughs> No. Because it even, you know, Ant Man for its failure, Shazam is gonna it's I think it's confirmed this it's made sixty five million opening weekend, like it total, including international. Yeah, sixty six million global, and that's that's and then hell. let's see what that second let's see what that second weekend drop off is for this well, is at it, least one hundred million dollar production. If it yeah, because like Usually, it's a drop off of what, like between fifty and sixty percent. That seems to be a lot to, more yeah. normal because I think Scream Six had a drop off like that, and they had a, quite a good opening weekend for a you know for a horror movie. My God, they'll scrape and by Creed as well. Just Creed around. Three is uh, doing pretty well. I think it's now made about two hundred million, something like that. That had a bigger opening weekend, I believe. But like, it's a reasonable prediction to say it might just make one hundred thirty million or something. Ah, uh, who? Oh. Yeah, when you when you think about it, like it getting to two hundred million seems like a bit of a stretch with the numbers it got, because like that is definitely lower than the first Shazam movie, and that movie probably had decent word of mouth. Whereas like it seems to just be broadly accepted that Fury of the Gods is like a joke clown movie, yeah. like that nobody cares about. Because of I mean, course, we were the meanest to it from what I've seen so far. I'm curious what drinking. Well, yeah, because most people don't really care about it, which is worse, really. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, uh, apparently had a budget of $125 million. Bad. Uh, meme has returned. He had indeed. Bit about DC. 
Mm -hmm. Long man, I say again, you must get Sheev Talks on EFAP. Also, hi, Rags. Hello. I'm not entirely certain of who that is, but maybe in Pusha. Us. When Sheev talks, people listen. EFAP quote without context of the day. I don't want to be culturally insensitive, Rags. I don't want to be cult. Oh, is that I don't? I said I don't want to be culturally insensitive. That's true. I don't want to be culturally insensitive. Also, I Rags, think three that seconds I am earlier, Italy and Spain are similar. They're both brownish. Very true. That's culturally insensitive. Yep. Oh, sweet crispy critters. You watched Shazam? I watched Inside, starring Willem Dafoe instead. Pretty good rat. I pray for you guys. Keep going strong. It's kind of funny, right? Because, like, the previous week we were talking about Jurassic Park. That it's like, time to talk about Shazam 2. <laughs> like, it's going to be great. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. Quite, a, uh, quite a pivot, isn't it? Mola Morbius, a character analysis April video. I mean, you could probably get something out, like a legit video. I'm sure he has a character. I haven't seen that film. I, I haven't either. The, the memes, you know, like I doubt it's as meme worthy as its memes are. No, I think it's just a bad movie. Is yes. Morbius. Michael Morbius. <laughs> I have embraced the long. Posted my first script in the Discord creation section. Pointers from anyone would be excellent. Thanks for the inspiration. Glad to hear it. Put up the good sir. Um, this movie has no testicles. <laughs> That's a Ghostbusters reference, right? Did they say balls or yes. testicles in that movie? I can't remember. Testicles. <laughs> All right, well, I'm glad that you've got that down pat. Down pat? Yeah, isn't that what you say when you've you've got something like memorized or you're you're like pretty good at it? I don't know. I don't, I've never heard of it. Okay. Put it in my back pocket for the future. Well, just hmm. of, of sayings. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I've heard that, Fringy. Don't worry. Okay, thoughts cool. on everything, everywhere, all at once, winning best picture. No uh, complaints pretty, from I'm, us. Yeah, I think I'm you're happy kind. with that. That's uh, my favorite film of the year. So. Yeah, and it's not that it doesn't have any competition. Uh, no, there's uh, a lot of other films that were really great. Um, I'm I'm pretty sure we've said it, but yeah, Puss in Boots and Pinocchio should have been nominees in Best Picture above the likes of Avatar. That's some bullshit. <laughs> Avatar um, revolutionizes technology, sir. So appreciate that. Uh, mm, yeah, for uh, me. Other films that I would have been happy with winning, All Quiet on the Western Front, I think I would have been okay with that winning. Yeah. Um, not more than everything ever all at once, but I would have been okay with that one winning. Mm -hmm. I really liked Need Elvis, to see that. and um, Rags also did too, but it seems yeah. like that's an unpopular opinion. Because um, of that cool one best picture, Elvis, I would have yeah. been like, I don't think I would have picked that over everything ever all at once, but I wouldn't have been like gutted or anything about that, but it seems like everybody else would have been. Dude, the fucking yeah, I think it was the... Elvis won an Oscar, any Oscar. Mm. Which is sad. Apparently, which is sad because think, yeah. a lot of cool stuff is in that movie, and I think they did a lot of awesome work. Well, let's put it this way: I think way. it's just the strange have, editing just threw everyone off. Winning. I would have preferred that over Tav winning, like best picture. Me too. Personally. Hey, Tar is fine. <laughs> no, Tar's not bad at all. Like, it's not a bad film. But I would have preferred it if Elvis beat that film yeah. if, it, if it was down to those two. <laughs> Imagine the good Hollywood could do if they just dedicated the millions and billions they use to make movies. Well, I, um, I think as we're discovering, like, uh, money is not the issue. Yeah, I was about to say it's it's the, it's starts with the scripts. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, like that's we talked about this before. But you know, like stunt work, costume designers, um, I don't know, set designers, and they're all people great. Who scope out and or scout out like locations and stuff. You can buy all of those things. They they are buyable. Yep. Well, they seem, seem to, to be buy recognized. Writing quality that doesn't seem viable. It just doesn't seem to be recognized. People know what it looks like to be a great production team or great costume designers, whether it be like time, like how quickly they can get their work done, how great it just looks like on its face. 
Um, all, all of these sort of aspects of production seem to be recognized for their value and like, you know, then it's, it reflects accordingly. But yeah, scripts, I don't know. That doesn't seem, I don't, I don't know. They're just, the quality control is, is piss. How do we get a script like Shazam Fear of the Gods, like, accepted? How is it acceptable? Yeah, how does someone read that and go, yeah, millions that's good and enough. millions, here you go. Yep. And that's the thing. Uh, it might be as simple a logic as the guy who wrote this, did he get money with his scripts before? It's like, yeah. You're like, oh, okay. Good enough. Yeah, well, uh, yeah, I things. guess. I guess so. I mean, one of them wrote a bunch of Fast and Furious movies and they make money. They do. I don't know. It just seems like, um, I, yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know what the quality control looks like or the recognition. It's really awkward because people recognize that somebody like Tarantino or Aaron Sorkin, that like these guys are masters of the craft. But then you've just got all of these other scripts that are somehow making their way through. I don't understand. Yeah, people can think that both of those are good, but I mean, that's what's so strange. You can have someone who thinks. Shazam! Fury of the Gods was an incredible film. I loved it. And then they can also look at an, another amazing movie like Lord of the Rings or whatever and say, yeah, that is also a, an amazing movie when these things yeah. are leagues apart in terms of their quality. And you just yeah. wonder like what their thought process is. Just a lack of appreciation for the craft of writing. I don't know what else it is. Because if we valued writing, like, like if, if, if Hollywood was valuing writing appropriately right now, a lot of the films that are coming out wouldn't have, they, they wouldn't be coming out. How cool would it be to submit, like, what being like a uh, fly on the wall when they submit the Fury of the Gods and the guy is just reading it in the board? He's like, oh, read it right now. And the guy's like, oh, like, okay, this is it. And he just starts pointing out how much nothing makes any sense. You need that guy. <laughs> you just need that guy to do that. Here, now this makes sense. The good writing. I don't. I don't... <laughs> he starts squinting, turning it sideways <laughs> like he's trying to read a map. <laughs> Explain to me where it is, Jeremy. <laughs> I can't find it. I hired you to make it, but I can't find it. Yeah. You put it. Where uh, is the good writing? Has the EFAB crew seen the trailer for Tetris? Looks promising. At the very least, a good sign that video games as creative films are on the rise. I mean, I'll definitely be watching that movie. So what's cool the about that out of myself. is the movie itself isn't like some blighted fucking disastrous Disney thing where all the Tetris blocks are little characters going, oh boy, we need to make a line. And it's like, oh no, there's a pit down there. <gasps> we disappeared. Blah, 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 blah. Like some goofy thing. It's like, it's the story of how it all came to of be how Tetris from was, yeah. real life, right? So that's going to be like a super interesting thing if it's done well, but it's also going to give more credibility to video game adaptation. Yeah, because at the end of the day, Tetris is a video game. Everybody knows it's a video game, and it's a different type of video game film. Um, it, it looks cool. It looks really cool. And, like, the story that they're going to be retelling, as I understand it, um, there was this gaming historian video that went through the story of Tetris. It's, like, a fascinating, twisting tale of uh, just all sorts of players and all sorts of shenanigans. Um... It's 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 a really interesting story, and that film looks cool. So yeah, fingers crossed that it's good. I'll definitely be checking it out. So it's like a documentary. Well, it's it's like a biopic in a sense, okay? Because um, it's it's the it's the story of like how Tetris came to be, essentially how it was made and how it got disseminated into the world. Because that story is kind of crazy. Like I'm not sure what uh what the biopic looks like for the development of Super Mario Brothers, other than like Miyamoto and a bunch of other guys in the office every day working on the game. You know, the story of Tetris is considerably more uh insane. I wonder if they're gonna have like a cool <laughs> rendition of the theme. That'd be you gotta neat. hope they have that in like some chasing sequence, maybe. I don't know. Maybe, yeah. And then do something really cheesy, like he throws a bunch of <laughs> boxes or something that someone chases over. They're all like shaped like the fucking people. I like how when you bring it up, oh, you know, like making all the Tetris blocks characters. I'm thinking of uh, the Angry Birds movie. Do you guys remember that? I never no, saw it, but no one yeah. does. All right, well, the, the like the, the Angry Birds were like talking, and they lived in like a town, and 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 then then there was a plot of like the pigs coming to take over the town or something. And of course, compared to what the game is, where it's just the birds getting flung from slingshots, 
It's like trying to find a way to justify making this a story when you can't. What does a Tetris <laughs> film look like if it's the Tetris blocks as characters? Well, that's you what know? I thought you were referring to originally. Like it was going to be some sort of pixels monstrosity. No, no, no. It's a biopic. Won't be bad as hope. I hope not. Yeah, I um, really want it to be good. I hate how they chickened out at the end with Billy. Yep. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You, you don't get to do that. Cardinal sin. Boo. Yep. yep. Bad. You lose I'm insane points. that nobody pointed that out that said that you this bullshit. Like just narratively, this is bullshit. You don't get to do that. You needed like you remember the the parody of, of misery and Family Guy with with Stewie, wow, which was also a thing that was in the film itself. Where it's like, no, oh yeah, remember because it was it, she was like, you know that isn't fair. Like it isn't fair to trick people essentially as viewers. <laughs> Oh, yeah, that's that's right. The reference was, like, that. I, I don't know, like, a character, like, they thought that they were dead, like, the car exploded and the character was dead, but then it turned out she was fine, and then Annie was like, no, that isn't fair! She didn't get out of the cocky duty car! <laughs> <laughs> it's basically that. You don't get to cheat the viewer. Did she get an Oscar I think, for uh, the role? Yeah, of course. <laughs> I remember watching it and thinking did. she was good in it. Yeah, she was really good in that movie. Uh, pretty sure she got the Best Supporting Actress that year. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. okay. Pretty soon no one will believe you even existed. The mayor from Rango speaking to Shazam 2, the movie. Oh, but also, the, rattle, but also the rattlesnake to the mayor. Because that was Jake. the really cool line. That's right. Rango is cool. That's a I cool movie. Seen it. I gotta see that. You do. I think you'd. I think you'd like it a lot, especially uh, in couched in the context of it being like a Western film that pays a lot of homage to Western. Well, I don't know. You you like Westerns generally, right? Or I can't or is that think actually of many I don't like, like honestly. With? Yeah, it's uh, it's a really I do cool have a thing for cowboys. Cool. Yeah, cowboys and I mean, cool. in this case, it's a cowboy who's a uh, chameleon. Because, like, that's why. Seriously, that's why Mandalorians get such a pass from people. It's like they're a combination of cowboy and... Well, they're space cowboys. Yeah, like, it, cowboy and knight, you know? Like, it's, it's like... Yeah, yeah. Cool things. And that's the thing, they well, never really I wish I could that agree hard. that they were cool. No, it's... They got a cool... They got cool helmets and cool armor. But, like, unfortunately, I don't find them very cool anymore. Yeah, um, they don't do cool things. Like, you can insist that they're cool... Yeah. But, but I just not. don't, like, believe you. Well, I don't... The, the, the whole creed is lame. You take yeah, your helmet sucks. off, you don't want of us. Like, what is that compared to any sort of uh, principles or values that they embody? <laughs> so, yeah, it's, kind of, to... it's kind of like a combination of several things, right? It, it's cowboy, knight, samurai. Kind of. It's like all of these things bundled together. We, uh, we talked about how dumb it is that they can just kick you out, but really it means nothing. Like, in yep. terms of what you've done to be kicked out. But... I was just thinking about how bo has now joined, and it's, it's yeah. like someone telling you, like, you are now an Argonite, and you're like, what does that mean? It's like, well, you stood here at this time. You're just sitting like, yep, what? you did it. And then they're like, so if yeah. you ever drink another drip of water, you are no longer an Argonite. And you just sit there with a bottle of water, like, <laughs> I, I guess I'll... I, I, is there nothing right, else I mean, baked this into is... this? Is that it? Yeah, and she's standing there like, I guess I'm on the way now. Yeah. <laughs> like, what? Okay, but I don't really give a, a shit. Creed that I don't care about. In fact, I don't really respect it at all. Yeah. But I guess there's going to be some sort of utility that comes from it that'll be useful. Who knows? Well, I'd be very surprised if they actually make her keep her helmet on for the rest of the season. Nah, I'd, I'd be surprised too. You'd imagine that it almost might be baked into like... Well, no, we get to see her face, right? Because it's like, you know, the actors want to get their faces seen. I just want that stupid scene where she takes the helmet off once they've left, and then Mando's like, <gasps> "Yeah," and then she's like, "What are you? What? What? <laughs> like, you don't take this seriously, do you?" <laughs> That'd be pretty funny. If he's like, <laughs> he's like pointing at her, you well. oh, 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 no! It's even better. It's got to be the uh, invasion of the body snatchers. He screams, <laughs> <laughs> pointing at her. His jaw just comes underneath the mask. He's yeah. <laughs> extended it so far. Well, his his mask stretches out like. <laughs> As you can see, we take Mando and its law very seriously at this point. Yep. Hey, it incredibly is very seriously. Serious, very it's serious yeah. No, I agree, Rags. It is very incredibly important very and serious. serious. Yeah. He's got a very important character arc that he has to something and do. 
I didn't know this film was out yet. Not that I would have watched it anyway, but I'm always excited to watch an EFAP. Also, hi, Rags. Hello. Yeah, hi. I would recommend consuming it through an EFAP than going to watch the movie yourself, but hey, you know what? Why to decide whatever they want. Uh, can't wait to listen to this shit show later. Cheers, massives. Enjoy. Mm -hmm. The marketing for this movie was really bad, but on a more optimistic end, I'm happy Gunn is directing and writing the new Superman movie. Um, I will be happy about that once I've seen it and think it's good. I'll be happy about it. Yeah, I think that's where I'm at too. We'll see. Because, you know, people ask me, like, do you think he's capable of that? It's like, possibly. I, I guess I don't know. I don't want to rule I it suppose out, when it comes to superhero films, we've seen him work well in a very specific format. Usually there's a, a big slate of characters, you know, like several characters. Clicks. Yeah, uh, whereas Superman is going to be a lot more focused, but maybe, yeah, like it seems like it'll be a, a new challenge for him. <clears throat> yeah, uh, like I said, I, I, the idea that someone's unproven in a particular field doesn't mean they should never try, right? Like, the only no, thing I, I guess don't think is they shouldn't try at all. Like, how are we letting this guy experiment with Superman? Don't we get someone who we know can do it? And it's like, well, that's just the cards that have been dealt, I'm afraid. That's mm -hmm. um, this one says, don't care, didn't watch. I feel like we can yeah. get a lot of those. Um, I need a hero made famous by Chris Chan to Ivy. Afraid I don't know the lore, so I can't say. Yeah, I'm just not. Just don't know. Um, bullies will pick anything different to bully about. It could be anything from a physical disability to the wrong band of genes. Okay, I saw a couple of comments about this. People really didn't get what we were saying. We're not saying bullies don't bully people for any reason. All assholes pick on people for all kinds of things, even disabled people to an extent. What we're talking about is really hard to get away with breaking a crutch and beating up a crippled kid in front of everyone. It's, um, yeah, you yeah, can't. Like, like, I thought that was obviously... really obvious. This isn't some post-apocalyptic wasteland where everyone <laughs> just loves to just inflict pain on others like this is just a modern high school like people have friends and like, the people like really not How like much understand the, do you think the, kids the are? crux of the argument there yeah it's it, picking on the crippled kid like just, of all of the people that they would probably end up picking on let's just say this way the bullies <laughs> will be disincentivized to do so by their surrounding um school mates eventually you can trust me that there are uh, there are yeah. bullies that'll be like don't bully the crippled kid yeah I, yeah, I guess I, I, I don't know what to tell you. Like, that, that just makes sense to me. Like I said on the stream, generally what I noticed is that the kids that had, like, some sort of mental illness were often the ones who got bullied. Yeah, the, like the some small sort of, people. Anyone right. who's really just small and thin and sort of People are really small. Well, I think the reason why it seemed like <clears> people picked on people who had, like, autism or something was because picking on, like, a crippled kid is, like, so obviously, like, what are you doing? Whereas I think when it's differences in people's sort of mental faculties, that's just not as, like... They, like, get enjoyment out of the way that they'll response. respond. Yeah, it's the responses to it. Because people who are, like, autistic and stuff, well, yeah. they don't quite know what how to... What is the response to a crippled you know, kid? Oh, you can't get up. It's like, what? And he's like, yeah, I can't. Of course. Like I said, picking, they, on like, people, yeah. picking on people at all in this sort of capacity is really bad. Um... I what? just, it was the it's exact the, opposite experience for me on, in on high school and school. It just seems like it's just not going to get you. Everybody's just going to hate you. Yeah. It was, if, if, the, saying, the, if the autistic kid or if the cripple kid, if you were their friend, that was like, like bonus points. That you, that they stupid were your friend. By there being a teacher there. And he's like, Especially, hey, stop that. Yeah. And I saw a comment saying, I guess you guys aren't familiar with some teachers. They just fucking hate the students too. And it's like, he didn't. He is good with the students. He's a nice teacher. The whole point no, he didn't. is that he's a friendly teacher that they like. And he doesn't do fuck all. He just turns up and goes, hi. And then they're like, oh, thank you. Like, no, no, no. You need to do something about that. You need to so actually he was assaulted kids. Because, and they destroyed his property. And this is two years on from when they were already doing it. So that means they've just been bullying him indefinitely. And nothing's ever been done about it. And nobody seems to it. care. Yeah. It's so weird. Like, I mean, yeah, like I said. Just, and especially after he's announced <laughs> that he's friends with, like, Superman and stuff. You think that he'd basically be un untouchable at this point. Like, nobody's messing with him. We've all been to high school, right? We're familiar with the whole thing. Yeah, that is pretty scene. funny. The idea that, like, oh, yeah, I guess you guys don't remember, like, <laughs> like what happened to people at school. Like, you've never seen bullying occur before. 
Well, that's because the people who wrote this are probably like what forty something. Well, and so yeah, when maybe they, they went to school. What school was maybe like, they exactly. be yeah. the, the disabled. Well, maybe right? either the world I mean, was just maybe to... different back then, and it's I, I, well, it's it feels not... like an eighties movie trope thing. Like these yeah. kids kind of. feel like eighties movie hey, bullies. Nerd. Which is kind of awkward, right? Because you would imagine that, like, because like David Sandberg, you probably that like he would have been in school in like the nineties, right? So I guess maybe that's almost like what he remembers of like bullies in high school was the movies he watched, like when he was in high school. I don't know. Maybe. I know that something that Trey Parker and Matt Stone said is the reason why they write the kids in South Park the way they do is because they felt like a lot of adults forgot the way that they actually talked, like when they were that age. Oh yeah. But like a lot the, by the time kids were hitting like t especially boys like 10, 11 or 12 getting pretty foul mouthed cuz they were like watching, you know, like the sort of cartoons like South Park <laughs> or uh, you know, they were just starting to get a bit edgy. I never had much of a um like I I I'm a bit I need to tone it down and work on it cuz internet culture has really made foul language a lot more common and as kind of res a, a result less foul but well, growing it's up diluted, isn't it kind of, pretty much yeah it's diluted whereas back then it just wasn't quite the same when you were younger uh your exposure to it wasn't quite as much the internet wasn't really a thing and i think that plays a huge part of it Like the first time I saw, I think I've, I think the first time I said the F word, it was in front of my parents and I didn't quite know what it meant. And so they were like, yo, what the, what the, what, ooh, they're like, you know, it was a big deal. <laughs> and so I was like, what? <laughs> so I learned that that was a very not good word. Oh, Ew. my parents did the thing where I had to hold soap in my mouth if I said bad words in front of them. Oh. No. Oh, yeah, yeah, I, I had a bar of soap and I, uh, yeah, I had uh, grounded if I did something like that. <laughs> they put a bar uh, of soap in my mouth and I had to hold on to it for a while. I remember I've told the story before, but what happened in primary school was like, if anybody ever said like, because of course, when you were like six or seven, nobody was saying any crazy harsh swear words. The worst would be like, God damn. And then they'd be like, I'm dobbing on you, which always annoyed me. I've mentioned it before. I didn't like that sort of knock attitude that people had in primary school. You said a word that really isn't that bad at all. I'm telling on you to the teacher to get you in trouble. Power upon you. They can it's so the lame. It's so you. lame. Like that already at that age, you're just like, oh yeah, I'm going to knock on you. <laughs> I'm going to tell the teacher that you said, God damn it. How lame is that? Yeah, it's, you always had those kids who were going to be the, yeah, the teacher's pets. They wanted to get their social credit with the with the <laughs> teachers, with the adults. They social credit by actually like turning you in, like it's the <laughs> like it's the Stasi or something. Informants to the teachers. I mean, hey, about. it's just that thing. I can I can get you know in good with the teachers who are the adults and they have the real power by turning. Oh, isn't that what happened with um? Uh, now I just heard this. Is this uh the Coach Red Pill thing? I, I have no what. idea. I don't know. I heard someone on, uh, I was uh, watching a Destiny stream, and someone had joined it and said that um, Coach Ridpill, the Gonzo Lira guy, he was in, he got deported from Ukraine, um, be, and he was like arrested and stuff over there because he was telling the uh, the Russians about Ukrainian positions and things. So he was gonna get like arrested and all that sort of thing. But he escaped, but but instead of getting like imprisoned or punished or probably worse, or probably which you know likely could happen, treason and things like that, um, he got deported because he like gave up the names of like five other people so that he could get deported someplace. I was like, man, oh, get yeah, men I, with the uh, sounds like serious stake stuff. I am being very serious. Jurassic Park's neat. Yeah, we're here talking about Jurassic Park. Flash. Shazam 2. Hail you massive. Now that's serious. Duck at work, so thanks for break down, breaking down, I guess, uh, of this DCEU disaster to spread the time. Speed up the time. Also, just got delivery confirmation of seasons 1 through 11 of Simpsons I got off eBay for a steal. Favorite episode suggestions? Oh. These two are the ones you want to ask about that. Uh, I mean, Who Shot Mr. Burns is like a duo of episodes pretty great. At least are on ice, I love it. 
22 short stories of Springfield thing is probably another. There's so many, because spanning from season eight to season two to eight is just like, you get gold almost every other episode. Loads of trios of horrors from that era are just amazing. On stop laughing at kinds of shit. So, um, you're in for a fun ride. Hey, boy. No, no need to jump to particular episodes, just, just watch them. Love it. I see. Hey, hey, rags. Hey, hey. What do you call a Liz bean in a salad bar? Uh, like a, a lesbian? Oh, you're right. That's probably what they're trying to say, but they're not allowed to say. What do you call a lesbian in a salad bar? That's crazy. You're not allowed to say lesbian in a super chat. They're Apparently making that not, like yeah. an unsayable word. That's crazy. Uh, I'm sure the lesbians love that. Um, <laughs> let me see. A lesbian in a salad bar? Um... I have no clue. A vegetarian. Oh. Oh, 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 oh. Scritches oh. for the good boy. Yeah. Thanks, thanks. I see. All right, so this one says, you did it, Bola. Bola, you did it. You saved film analysis, and we believed it. The first time Bola was real. <laughs> it's a Robert Meyer Burnett quote. <laughs> and I believed it. You did it. Good job. Uh, what are you going to... Oh, so Wing's quote of the day. What are you going to do to me? What are you going to do to me? Shoot you in the kneecap. That's what I'd do. Then I'd beat you with a fucking pistol grip until your uh, teeth fell out of your grip? head. What prompted this? No idea. <laughs> Apparently it's it could not be anything. What's the bonus quote? That was it. I, I read them together. Oh, okay. That was the part Jeez. one. Yeah, he's... Oh, uh, you know... Angry guy. Nice guy. Pretty nice guy. It could have been anything that set him off, you know? Someone in his chat randomly saying that you are not talented at Call of Duty. He's like, listen here, I'm gonna kill you. <laughs> Literally is an auto antonym, like oversight, sanction, and peru. I don't even know what an auto, auto antonym, antonym is. Also called a contronym or antagonym, among other terms, is a word with multiple meanings and senses. Uh, the word, so the word cleave can mean to cut apart or to bind together. Oh, I think I'm aware of some of these words. Um, oh, if this is, okay. Uh, yeah, contronyms like, um, like, uh, like dust, right? Um, if you're dusting something, you, you're, it's like you're removing the dust from it, but dusting something is also to, like, sprinkle dust all over something. It can mean both. Right. Um, um, I can clear this. Because I was thinking about this, because I was like, why does my brain work this way? Because the second one says, Rags is right, literally destroys the figurative. So I'm with Rags completely. We talked about it before. On I'll give a good example that we can everyone would agree on, I'd assume. Let's say there's a guy running in a race, and the, the race challenge is to run with, like, a, a torch, and everyone's covered in oil. This is a very bizarre thing, just run with me. And he's, he's sprinting, he's going for it. It's the first person to reach the end, right? And, and you don't see the race, and your friend says, man, he's on fire. And you go, what? Because he's literally on fire. You're, you're sitting there, and the, you're, you're, you're going to be like, you mean he's, like, the, the torch has hit the oil and he's on fire, yeah? And they're like, no, I mean he's doing really well. Like, that guy's on fire. Like, no, you, the, using literally there is completely fucked up like, any sense of being able to uh, properly communicate what you're trying to say. And Isn't I was that hypothetical? Of... If someone said, like, if he's, you, like, in that sense, I would think that he's actually, like, in, like, flames are coming off of him. Yeah. If they repeated it and then said, literally, he's on fire. I'm like, oh, shit, you're, like, you're being serious. You're using the, the literal word to, you know. And then they go, no, I was just trying to emphasize just how good he's doing. And it's like, well, that was fucking up everyone's ability to understand what the hell you're even trying to say. And so I was like, why am I trying to draw a difference? Why do I even see a difference? Because when you said, like, oh, you've used literally wrong, in my head, I was like, no, I'm aware of how I'm using it, but for some reason it doesn't register the same way as that example. I, um, I think what you're doing is you're using the literal sense of a figurative phrase, um, like... Uh, in in the way that um, literal can be used to mean really or an extreme version of something, you're using it with a figurative um, a figurative phrase. So he's you know like the dragon is really on our tail. 
Well, so um, what I was like thinking about was when you have on his tail, the part that I was trying to say was literal was the on part, not the tail part, I guess. Because when you say someone's on your tail, as I was trying to explain poorly, was like, you can have several phases of being on someone's tail, and I'm trying to narrow it down. Because the whole point I was trying to make was how the hell did they manage to do any of this when the dragon is right behind him? And then my brain was like, well, they on his tail, on their tail. And I was like, yeah, but I need to get rid of any interpretations that involve he's just chasing them. And I was like, literally on his tail. And then I was trying to commit to like, trying to describe how close he is. And uh, for some reason, my brain was like, that's, that's the word you can do it with. But I'm not even sure the validity of using literally that way or how confusing it would be. I don't even know if it typed out, it would be like literally on comma his tail. As in to try and specify. That would seem strange to me um even yeah even that is like structurally literally on comma his tail well, yeah that seems really odd i mean that's not it would be, invalid I think the, right as I far think as i know literally on or literally on tail. dot 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 his tail and then you'd emphasize like literally on tail i think that just would call attention to the fact that he is actually in a position where he is on top of um literally on it if anything it draws attention to to it binds like literally and on together which yeah that well, would because just something to me it would i wanted to bring up but uh i was just too confused by my own sort of like trying to figure this out was that i'd still be wrong if humans had tails because they he wouldn't literally be on their tails yeah if anything it would be worse if we had actual tails so obviously in this instance i'm just trying to emphasize how close he is and, uh, yeah. Um, bit of a I think the way to go with on. stuff. We need to get into like generally, myself included. I need to do this, and I need to train myself to do this. Kind of like swearing less. Um, if being able to rephrase things multiple times without using the same phrase, I need to be able to when I talk. It, it's kind of how you introduce people to new words. And if for those of you who make YouTube videos, instead of just dropping a word no one understands use that word you know it's allow me to elucidate clarify what i mean right like you use the word and you use another word for it next to it so that people kind of learn that word and what it means um or when they're saying like in the sense of the dragon's right behind them instead of saying on their tail literally on the tail to sort of express how close they are together just with a different phrase mm -hmm. um it is an interesting balancing act in terms of figuring out how to communicate effectively while also communicating in a way that is interesting. Um, I think that more often, yeah, like that, that's a really difficult thing to do. When do I use words that are kind of like, I don't know, for lack of a better word, um, uh, uh, oh damn, I'm actually is... not sure what word I would use. Like if, if you were to say, allow me to elucidate compared to allow me to explain, you're kind of making a sentence that, like, I would say fundamentally less people are going to understand. But, like, who cares, right? To some extent. To some extent, uh, to you would some forego extent. clear communication to actually be interesting. Um, but because can... if, if that wasn't the case, you would write everything like it was a children's book, where you only use simple words. Well, it's a good way to just introduce a new word and also allow people to understand what is being said. Mm -hmm. um so you're saying uh well, let me elucidate help this let me lot. clarify if, this if you would say oh are you confused that's that's fair enough allow me to elucidate i think you know if you'd never heard of that word you'd go oh that probably yeah. means explain or clarify because of the yeah context. yeah yeah exactly um, yeah use a word in a context that people can sort of yeah. understand instead and, of just saying the... um instead of saying something is um uh Oh, we, we we were talking about this earlier. Erudite means like be showing great, like like you're smart essentially. If you're erudite, you've got a lot of knowledge. And if you if you describe someone as erudite, it's like oh yes, uh, Samantha is very erudite. No one, most the vast majority of people don't know what that means. It's just not a word that's in common parlance. Yeah. So you see, even by parlance there, you could probably piece together what it means. But if you just randomly call someone that in and of itself just alone no one's going to know it but he said oh yeah samantha is very erudite she reads all the time she's you know got a degree and he's like she really you know she's really interested in learning 
then people because like oh that's probably what erudite means it has something to do with her having a lot of knowledge or you know she seems to be very smart and that's how you introduce people to words in a sort of natural sense you just sort of you slip them in and a, in a, on top of a lot of stuff so that people make the associations or you have something in the context where people can understand it question for everyone what do y'all consider to be the best slash favorite movie show video game? And for Mola, I win Lannister, your favorite character of all time, I rags. No, my I... favorite character of all time. I'm <gasps> mysterious, yes. partially about it whenever I'm in front of people who I plan to show Buffy and Angel to. <laughs> yep. For good um, reason, so you'll could, understand that could later. Could you say the... So, what do y'all consider the to be again? the best slash favorite movie show and video game? Which is like six questions for each of us. Yeah, I was about to say, I'm, I almost feel like you're you're trying to squeeze too much out of your one question. Uh, favorite show is uh, probably Chernobyl, Arcane, or Damn. I don't know. Uh, well, that's two. That's fine. Uh, favorite movie is Lord of the Rings Fellowship of the Ring and favorite game is pff, no Resident Evil 4 or Soma or Minecraft there you go the three <laughs> there you go oh, it's that oh yeah that's absolutely up there I need to play the, the yeah they did the remastered version I haven't started yet I need to get into that you're gonna full go talking about the best of all of it the best of all of these, like in terms of what, in, which of the ones I listed saying, was the best. I'm assuming you have different lists for what you consider the favorites and best. Did they ask for best and favorite? Yeah. I'm almost oh. offended by how much they're trying <laughs> to ask in one question, wow. and I'm kind of uh, like, just I'm curious. almost not joking. That's a lot of stuff to try and well, extract yeah. in one question. Isn't We're obviously well going to be like, like, well, I gave you my favorite, so we can move on. You can do that if you want. <laughs> I think that, yeah, because getting into, listing the favorites is one thing, but then getting into the best one, I mean, if we're talking about video games, the best video game is probably something like Tetris or Pong, something super simple that absolutely just nails its concept, um, but I, it's not a game that I'd want to be stuck with, you know, like I'd much rather be stuck with Minecraft than stuck with I feel like you know, Minecraft like would be an easy like argument ones, for like one of the best video games of all time. All the ones Rag mentioned could be kind of defended as best. It depends on very specifically what format you're using. Mm. Yeah, best in a video game is a different question than asking best in a in a in a context of a show or a narrative. And if you had only asked for the video game example, you might have gotten <laughs> that answer. But having asked for all of them, not only favorite but best. You've diluted the amount that we can talk about. Well, you can do whatever you want. I was, I was, I was asking if Rags <laughs> wants to answer the best one or not. It's up to him. Um, no, you, you weren't asking I did that. enough. I asked them to do it. Mm -hmm. That was baked into theirs. The chatter. Well, yeah, whoever I, asked this question, you guys asked always that. have the right to say, you know what? I, don't, I, don't, I, I think I'll only answer the one question. Yeah, I just don't know. I just don't know what the best movie is. I don't know what the best video game is, though. I spoke a little bit to him earlier. And as for mm -hmm. the best show, I also don't... I just don't know. So, I'll go with... Uh, favorite movie is Prestige. Favorite show be the Buffy vs. Buffy and Angel put together. And favorite video game? Hmm. <laughs> I'm gonna, like, like, so, you know that uh, those answers the Rags gave? I'm going to... Kill two of them, Sober and Resident Evil 4 for sure, but then also throw in Metroid Prime and Super Metroid, and there will be others to throw in, but I don't want to actually give like my top 20 list of that. That'll do for now. And then best for all of them, like, yeah, the, these these questions are difficult to answer because I need to go through all the lists and figure it out, but front runners would, of course, include things like the games. GTA 5 would probably be the Metroid... Prime and Super Metroid would probably be in there. And then, as was mentioned, stuff like Pong, Tetris, maybe even Pac-Man Space. Going to score pretty high as well. Um, best movies and shows. Show? Um, I mean, Blind Manor is going to be one of the ones I think scores one of the highest. Uh, yeah. In terms of just managing to control a narrative with very little in terms of scores. What else would it? I mean, Breaking Bad is obviously up there. Uh... Getting the show, not the oh, Band of Brothers that would be up, and then best movies. <clears throat> well, 
it's just going to be stuff, all the stuff you know, like Blade Runner or The Godfather or uh, 2001, these films that are like almost impossible to pick apart. They're a uh, gosh darn genius. They don't necessarily reflect what my favorites are. Unless... Now, Fringy, you may say whatever you want. Uh, yeah, you got enough, buddy. All right. I see what you were oh, doing wow. there. Damn. Sneaking in like six questions into one. Uh, important yeah. Yeah. important query, lads. Ass or titties? Also, high ranks. Uh, hello. That's not necessarily. Oh, oh t uh, ass. Ass. I'm definitely into ass. Uh, I think it's more important. I think a woman who is um, essentially flat chested or has a very modest chest, but who has a really, really nice looking rear end. Scores way higher than a woman who has like really large breasts but no ass at all. Um, but so, so yeah, and also you know guys don't even have the option really up there. So you know there you go that covers both ends of the field for you. Oh, yeah. But yeah, absolutely an ass man. Oh yeah. As you saw from the coverage of Suicide Squad, I tend to react and be more interested in the, the as was stated in the, at the teats side of the equation. But I'm a fan of both. Hmm, am I going to be boring and say, you know what, both of them, they're both important? Yeah, I guess you will be boring. <laughs> yeah. I think I, I think I was just thinking about the question, like, do I think that I, like, lean definitively one way over the other? And I think my realization is, I'm not sure. I don't know. I'll have to think about that. All right, next one says, it's Shazam and time. True. Ah, Shazam and time. Remember, there was a film called Morbius. There was. Ooh. Really? Wow. Yeah, there was. It, it made a cool. billion dollars mm. or whatever. <laughs> I wonder if they're going to make a sequel. No, no way. Still... Cowards. Well, I don't know if No Way, right? Because they're still pushing ahead with their, like, Sony Marvel, you know, universe thing. They've still got but they'll try different out. things before they try Morbius again. Um, <laughs> that's true, but I mean, you know, Venom 3, like, that's they're nearly about to be done with Venom, I guess. Like, in terms of individual movies in all likelihood. Uh, well, maybe they will keep making more Venom movies. Yes, the question is, what does Madam Web look like, or that Venorban? <laughs> Ven Venorbius. Venorbius. Venomorbius. Of course. So you know how people were complaining about the Norse representation in God of War. If that was misrepresentation, what in the fuck is this for Greek? You yeah, know, oh, talking what? about it yeah. because nobody oh, recognizes yeah. these characters. Uh, when That's you right. say Daughters of Atlas, I think most people be like, did Atlas even have daughters? I don't know, fuck it, whatever. Atlas, is that the globe guy? I, <laughs> the I the guess globe guy, yeah. Whatever, yeah. <laughs> that is kind of funny, though, because it's like, oh, you're very familiar with Agraboda, are you? And you're like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I love Agraboda. She's my favoritist in the, the Greek world. Well, the, does the stuff. Skittles contain titanium dioxide. They are being sued because it causes cancer and birth defects. Damn. Everything causes cancer. That's kind of true, yeah. But if they're being sued for it, it's probably a little bit more serious than water causing cancer. I would cancer. imagine. Uh, speaking of candy mascots, many years ago, I kicked a guy dressed up as a Reese's at Hershey Park because I used to hate peanut butter. What the fuck? Oh, <laughs> oh that's, I a, you that's been... a jerk thing to do. Well, maybe he was a kid. Still. Oh I mean, yeah, still, still I guess a bad more... thing to do. Still a bad thing to do, but I guess it's like I was just wondering if it was like I guess you were inspired by the Simpsons when they went to Itchy and Scratchy Land. Yeah, that does sound like. <laughs> what Simpsons are you in joke. here for? Oh, I kicked that stupid Itchy character in the butt. <laughs> <laughs> Please put up Sour Patch as an option. It's objectively one of the best candies out there. You got sour, then sweet, and then you have five options of flavor. It's interesting, I actually listed that as one of the good ones. I like Sour Patch Kids quite a bit. Well, the options I'd were like, it. at that point, it was Skittles, Mystery Box, with a random candy, I can't answer, and then I'm just happy to be here. It's not like we included... We had four <laughs> Every... at maximum in these polls, yeah. so... That's right. Um, sour Crater Gum, never forget. I never had Sour it. Crater Gum? I've never heard of that. No consequences, Ringy. Tell that to Shazam's raked leaves. <laughs> oh, true, yeah. They're gonna rake up all those leaves. Harsh world they live in. Hello from Albany, Australia, EFAP crew and guests. Hello. Hey. Hey, everyone. Oh, a live EFAP. Who's there, you know? 
I am still on EFAP 52. I have a long ass way to go. Wish me luck and may the dawn bless your face. Yeah, good luck, everyone. You can do it. Yeah, you're quite. It's going to take you a while. You can, you can do, do it, though. It. Believe to achieve. I can't believe they let Rags get away with saying Minotaur like four times. Except these flaws. What, Minotaur? It's Instead Minotaur. 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 I yeah. wonder, I actually, I think I might actually swap between them. Um, mm. If I'm not thinking about it, it might just be that's the one that my brain decided was coming out that day. At least you're not saying Minotaur. Minotaur? I think someone, some people say Minotaur. Yeah. Uh, I don't like that at all. <laughs> I think like Minotaur like makes them sound pretty cool. Minotaur or something would be like... Eh. <laughs> uh, well, if it if he he's named after King here M I N O S King Minos Minos, I Minos right? If it's Greek, it would be Minos. King would Minos? that be Minotaur be then? Mina, <laughs> Minotaur maybe I don't know. Mina, I don't I have no clue. The problem I is don't know. I don't know the have we have we talked about this? How you really can't appeal to almost anything when it comes to pronouncing I don't words. Think you can no. There's so many so, really. weird different examples and rules all over the place of how things work. Um, we ultimately just have to concede that it's just whichever cooler sound wins out most people. Well, the, it's, they're all made up, aren't they? Kind of, yeah. People will often just adopt the one that sounds best. Mm -hmm. So that will kind of eventually sort of create a bit of a feedback loop on which one is the correct one. I feel like a better movie would have been Black Adam and Shazam having different viewpoints toward heroism, kind of like Dear Devil and Punisher and Netflix series and the family having different opinions toward those philosophies. Uh, yeah, but they were never going to have Black Adam in the Shazam movie for some reason because The Rock didn't want to be second billing, I guess. Yeah, and I mean, you know, like, what do you make Shazam about? Like, I don't know, probably about the thing that it's about, the like children being superheroes. That's insane. And you don't use it at all. Nope. How embarrassing. This is matchup. Mando versus MCU Taskmaster. Sorry, Mando, Whistling Birds. Taskmaster's gone. Yeah. 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 And you might be like, well, what if Taskmaster gets the jump on him? It's like, once again, yeah, sure, maybe, but that, you know, you know. That's gone, man. Well, even then, you can get between the armor pieces. All I'm saying is, That's like, true. if they're both dropped, they spawn in a room, and you know, they both got their normal gear. Taskmaster can't even dodge Whistling Birds, really. Yep. That's right. And those things hurt, so yeah, that's probably also the dark saber. <laughs> um, that's it. All righty. Oh boy. And done. Thank you all so much for giving this a listen. Uh, I hope you have a good day, whatever it is you're up to. We'll see you for the next EFAP related thing, whatever it might be. Thank you all so very much. Yeah, everybody. We will see you later. Bye.